Today I want to take a look at an approach to making animal heads a little bit different than what I usually do. Usually I double a bar back on itself to get the mass, but today I'm going to try and forge the basic profile of the head out of a much larger bar than I want. That way I've got more mass for the head and I can set it up for the features I want. I think this could go any way you wanted to. The first thing I ever saw like this was somebody doing a steer head and the next time it was kind of a ram's head and the approach was generally the same. I think you could do a dragon, just about any kind of a fantasy animal head you wanted to. And I have no idea what I'm going for. I'm just trying out the concept to see how it works. Whether this ever gets used or not, we'll see. I want to start by offsetting the bar and then welding it onto a longer piece so I've got a nice handle for it and so it might be usable in another project in the long run. I'm starting with a piece of one by one and a half for the animal head, so that's roughly 25 by 40 millimeters, somewhere in that general range. And I'm welding it to a piece of three quarter inch square bar, which is about 20 millimeters square. With my scarf completed, it's time to bring this up to welding heat, and I'll put a little bit of flux on there as it comes up to heat. With any luck, this will be a one heat weld. Well, I certainly wasn't able to complete that weld as a single heat weld, and for that matter, I didn't even complete it as a drop the tongs weld. I just couldn't get this thing to stick. I tried several times and it kept squirting off the anvil, so I ended up using the MIG welder to tack weld the animal head onto the bar so that it would stay together while I got the weld. Brought it back up to heat. It welded just fine. Still used several heats to refine it and make sure the scarfs were down, but it looks very good. You can see a little telltale sign of one scarf. The second scarf totally disappeared. So it's a good solid weld, just took a little bit more to do in the gas forge than it might have in a coal forge. But that was sort of part of my challenge for today. Lately I've been watching a lot of videos from Mark Asprey, and Mark had done a forge welded basket handle on a fire poker in a gas forge just as a demonstration, and he said he was having trouble getting the drop tong style weld to stick. And I think what the problem is, well, first of all, a lot of gas forges won't reach welding heat in the first place. And then most of the ones that do reach welding heat just barely reach welding heat. 
which sometimes is really good because you're not going to burn material up in there and create a 4th of July sparkler when you're trying to get something welded. But it's hard to keep that up at welding temperature when you're coming out of the forge and going to the anvil. As soon as it hits the air, things start to cool off. But if you tack weld them, or in Mark's case, he actually drilled and put a rivet in so the two pieces were held together by a rivet. But then the parts that have to be in contact with each other to make the weld are protected from the air. They're the part that's going to cool off the slowest. As the outside cools off, that stays hot longer, and that's enough time to make the weld. So that's just one of the things you might have to adapt your technique a little bit if you're working out of a gas forge. Anyways, the next thing I want to do is start to define the different parts of the head. I'm going to start the snout of whatever kind of a creature this is going to end up being. We'll pretty much be full width of this, so I need to offset for the brow, and then offset again for either horns or ears. I'm not sure which it's going to be. If, if this is going to be some sort of a fantasy creature, a grotesque or a dragon, something like that, or if I'm going to make something more canine out of it and maybe just put ears on it, we'll kind of see as we go. It's all just an experiment. Now that's absolutely doable by hand at the anvil, but this is the kind of thing that I own a power hammer for, so I'm going to go do it at the power hammer, get it done a lot faster. But if you don't own a power hammer, just plan to spend more time at the anvil or get a buddy with a sledgehammer to come help you. So this is my setup to make some sort of a figurehead out of. This will be kind of the snout or muzzle, whatever you want to call it. Eyes can go in this second step down here. And this either becomes horns or maybe ears. Heck, if it's ears and you just split it the way it is, it's darn near a pretty decent rabbit. But rabbit's not really what I had in mind. I was thinking maybe dragon, maybe something more canine. We'll just have to see. But with that in mind, I think the snout could have been a little bit longer, so maybe starting with a piece of two inch bar would have been better than starting with the one and a half bar. The only way you figure this stuff out is to try it. So I'm going to think on this a little bit, maybe take it into the office tonight and stare at it after dinner and see what I think it really looks like, and be back in the shop in just a bit to actually turn this into something. Yeah, I've decided I definitely do not want to go with just a rabbit. That might be an interesting thing. And I've seen some pretty nice forged rabbits, but I want to go ahead and go with more of the fantasy creature look on this. So my next task needs to be to draw out the snout a little bit and see if I can make it a little bit longer. To do that, I made a couple of little fixtures for the vise, one to keep me from pushing this back too far while I'm doing it, and the other to keep me from gouging the bottom under his chin as I drive down with a fuller.
Well, obviously, offsetting for the ears or the horns or whatever this section is going to be through here wasn't the right thing to do when I did it by altering the snout and trying to draw that out. I've left way too much forehead. So I'm probably just going to cut this off, offset it again, draw out a little bit more material, and then see what we end up with. Like I say, this isn't necessarily going anywhere specific. It's just a practice piece to try and figure out how to approach this. I've decided I'm definitely going to split that into horns, and that's why I'm drawing it out to a point. And then when I split it, most of the drawing out is already done. I'm going to use this same fuller to try and establish some facial features, specifically where the eyes are going to go. And then I'll set those in with a ball nose punch.
This is a good place for the scroll tongs we did in the last video. Just a little bit of last minute straightening and some wire brushing and I think this is pretty much good to go. Although perhaps a little bronze brushing on the horns as this thing cools. I'm not sure what I've actually created here, but it is the style I was going for, if not exactly the right kind of critter. And I was hoping for something considerably larger. I thought starting with that inch by inch and a half, I was going to end up with a much larger face by the time I was done. So I've still got some more work to do on the concept. Now what's my actual goal with this and why did I put it on such a long bar? Well, this is inspired by a gate by Samuel Yellen, or at least it came out of the Samuel Yellen shop. There are so many people working in that shop, it's entirely possible he didn't actually make the gate himself. But nevertheless, it has a couple of very striking animal heads on the top, and they look straightforward, but they don't look like they were made on the end of the bar and just bent over like so often is the case with dragons and ram's heads, things like that. So that's what I'm trying to come up with is something in that style. Not exactly a duplicate, probably won't ever try to duplicate the gate itself. I just really like that style of animal head. So I'm going to keep working on this concept. Matter of fact, I've got some ideas and maybe while they're fresh in my head, might try them out again next week and see if we can come up with a little bit more dramatic version of this and see if I've learned anything in this process. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. If you would like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. In the meantime, hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you next week.